<clears throat> Hello there. It's been quite a while since I've done a blog, uh, a video blog on anything in model railroading and such, but uh, I am back. I've definitely been doing a lot of modeling. Uh, <clears throat> I just haven't had much time to make blogs and everything. haven't had a chance to have the house to myself too much, but I do now, so I'm going to share with you what I've been doing. Okay, some of the things we'll talk about today concerns rolling stock as well as some things I've done with my son's layout. First, the rolling stock. Uh, what you see here is an AccuRail uh, tri-level open auto rack. This was a um, brown or oxide collar, data only. I made Milwaukee Road placards, put the road number on it, and weathered it. And of course, as you can tell, I loaded it. These are 1974 AMC Gremlins. These come from a company called Motomax USA, part of their Fresh Cherries lineup. The nice thing about these cars, other than being good looking cars, is the fact that I, they only cost me $3.99 a piece. So when you consider there's 18 of these on here, that's not a bad deal. Um, imagine trying to fill this up with say 78 Impalas from uh, Mini Metalworks or classic metal works, I'm sorry. Uh, you're looking at $12 a car, even though then you can only get um, 15 of them on here. But still, that's a hefty price tag. I get a lot of comments about this. Um, a lot of people like talk about if they owned a Gremlin or such back in the day. We'll zoom in on one here. Like I said, you can tell these are pretty nice cars. Um, good paint on them. Uh, you notice they have a little spoiler on the back. The ones on the lower levels, I pulled the spoiler off of them so they would fit. And that might have actually been a reality in real life and probably been wrapped up in plastic sitting in the back seat or something. The dealer would then install it once it arrived. So, that's my auto rack. And it does track very well. Um, I run at the head of a 40 car freight with our club never derails uh, going forwards or backwards so it's uh, been a success to uh, say nonetheless next up I'm going to shift the camera over a little bit is the locomotive front here this is a Milwaukee Road GP9 as you can tell it has torpedo tubes on the roof steam generator this is a uh, Proto 2000 locomotive, actually from Lifelike. Not be this is before it was Walters. <clears throat> so, uh, the show you some of the details. I've actually had some of these details on here for a while. I finally finished up the last of them. Up on top of the short hood, we've got a steam generator. We've got a single chime horn facing forward. As we go back, we see the tanks. And I'm going to lift the camera up and try to do this smoothly. There's another air horn sitting down between the uh, air tanks facing back the other way between the uh, radiator fan and the uh, forward most exhaust stack um, <clears throat> however the most uh, I think telling of this modification on this locomotive is the fuel tank most freight GP9s have the uh, air tanks sitting here just in front of the rear trucks right in this area and, uh, of course, looking at prototype photos, practically every railroad that had torpedo um, tube jeeps uh, did not have those air tanks on the back. So I took the fuel tank on this, fuel tank from a, uh, a spare that I had, and I spliced them together. And uh, I think I've got a pretty relatively accurate um, locomotive. I'm not a rivet counter of any kind, but I believe the major visual details are important. Uh, fuel tank sizes, uh, horns... If you got a steam generator, um, you know, little things like that I mean, really makes the big difference. So I think it's pretty neat and a unique looking unit. All right, next up, we're here on my son's layout. I've added uh, four key structures to this layout. The first one um, is the JL Innovations Kit, known as their Marble Rock Garage. Um, <clears throat> As you can tell by the design of the kit, um, to the right you can see with the metal roof, that was an addition later on in the structure's life. That's the garage. Um, there you can see the police car parked out with the hood up. Don't know what's up with that. <clears throat> I painted the building light undercoat gray. Before I did that I put two coats of my 
um, India ink isopropyl alcohol, 91% by the way. Always use that with wood structures. Never use anything less than 91%. Otherwise it has too much water, it can cause warpage. But anyway, I put two coats of that on and then I dry brushed two coats of the gray on. That's my cat, you can hear me meowing, one of our cats. And then I put another wash, I might have put two, but I think I only put one on of any ink after I painted it. And I really like the effect that it gives, and we'll get some closer up shots here. I'm kind of up high so you can see it. Um, the trim in the doors, as well as the island here where the fuel pumps are, that's Milwaukee Maroon. Milwaukee Road Maroon color. Uh, I thought that went pretty well with the gray. The roof they supply this tissue paper that you can glue on for a rolled tar paper roof. I don't care for that. I actually went to a very old uh, standard and that is using masking tape. So I use the masking tape. I cut thin strips to make caps on the peak lines and there in the valleys. And um, I like how it came out and weather wise and everything. And let's see, we'll get down and we'll take some nice close up shots of it. Try to do the best on steady camera work. And here we go. I do not like the free hand with the camera. But we don't have much choice here. Alright. So anyway, down we go. You can see uh, some of how it fits in. Put some vegetation around it and everything. Um, and such. All sorts of stuff laying around. You can see a... a, a drink cooler there out in front of the garage. All sorts of tools, some type of tank, some type of, I don't know, mechanical piece sitting on the dolly there by the police car. Um, and here we get some other views of the structure. You can see some of the other junk, as you will, that I have around. This all came with the kit. Oh, it was a pretty nice kit. Um, you can kind of see in the garage, there's a jack, a, a, a tool stand and some other things. I'm not quite sure what they are. I'm not exactly a mechanical person. So all the signs that you see on it came with the kit. And that's pretty much it for this structure. Um, as we go back you can kind of see how this one fits into his little center of town there. So it might have been an older structure and things got built up around it. But I thought it filled that kind of what was really just a big gravel parking lot. I thought it filled that area rather nicely. Moving over to another JL Innovations kit, this is their section house slash speeder shed. I'm going to try and get you some good views of this because it really sits in the corner. As you can tell, like the Milwaukee Depot here, I kind of gave it a similar scheme, the two shades of gray, the darker gray along the bottom. Um, I used my own rails and made my own entrance into the shed. And you notice we got the doors open. Um, I'm going to eventually get a speeder kit to put in there. Um, this miscellaneous uh, junk and stuff that actually I had laying around, I put around it. Um, again, I did the masking paper or the masking tape tar paper roof trick as opposed to their tissue paper with glue. Uh, kind of fits in the general scheme of things. Got a little parking spot, guy pulls truck up into. Um, I think overall, when you factor in with the station and the uh, water tower, I think it makes a really nice scene. And especially if you have locomotives starting to ease around the tracks through here, I think it looks uh, pretty neat. So, on to the next structure. Now, you may be wondering why I have all these new structures. My dad went to the train show in Grand, Rapid, Grand Rapids last summer, visited the JL Innovations and Bar Mills booth, and decided his grandson needed some... Uh, Thanks for his layout. Awfully nice of Grandpa, wasn't it? So here we have the Bar Mill Star Corner Diner. This is part of a series of kits. Uh, that's the only one we have. But um, it's a restaurant built around an old trolley car. Now, I understand from the directions they cast a trolley car from a... Uh, they made a hollow casting from a uh, Bachman model. I have to say, it's a pretty nice kit. Um, the wooden part went together very easily. This one I didn't do as much weathering. Um, with. I kind of wanted it to actually be a, a decently maintained building. I mean, heck, you're going to eat there. You don't want to look like a total dump. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but anyway, the uh, the siding collar is actually aged concrete. I sprayed all the wood parts with a uh, cheap Walmart enamel automobile primer, as they suggest. 
and then I dry brushed a couple of coats of the aged concrete on and then I made a wash with India ink over that and that's about all the weathering I did the roof is all their material typical bar mills uh, roofing material weathered it uh, all the vents and stacks as well are metal castings. I painted those silver and then I dry brushed a lot of grimy black, roof brown, and rust all over them. Especially the, um, I'm guessing this is like the exhaust vent for maybe the range or something. Um, again, all the signs came with the building. The trolley car is a re was a resin casting and that was all airbrushed. I airbrushed it gray and then I put on, again, aged concrete. I went kind of a cream color. The red is Sioux Line Red and that was at their suggestion in the instructions so to match the sign. That's the, the red sign on the front here. And then I sprayed the roof black. Um, just all using good old masking tape. The foundation, I tried a different technique for painting brick. In the past I'd paint the actual brick collar, whatever type of reddish orangish color or brownish color that I would use and then wash the uh, light gray on the show the mortar. This time around I sprayed it with the light gray and then I dry brushed my brick color on and then weathered it with a few washes of a um, of some uh, burnt umber Woodland Scenics paint. Just made it into a thin wash and I thought it came out pretty good. And I got a bunch of brick structures I'm going to be building and I'm going to try that technique on them. I think it works better than the other way around. So, again, all the signs came with it. Uh, a really fun kit. I think one of the cooler kits I've ever built. Um, sorry, wrong on the zoom here. Let me back out. You can kind of see again how it fits into his town. If you remember from previous videos. Just kind of, the building probably always been there. Um, Find parking where you can. Remember, this is the type of town back in the day you probably walked a lot of places. Okay, last structure on the list. Another bar mills kit. And this was a blast to build. This is the Bulls Salvage. Um, so as you can tell, this one got a lot more weathering to it. I love this end of the building with the steel clapboard or metal clap siding covering all the bare studs. Some on the end here. Um, just absolutely fun. The main part of the building, the white part, received approximately four coats of India ink alcohol mixture, followed by two coats of dry brush white, followed by two more coats of the India ink alcohol. Um, I always dry brush usually. Um, I think it just makes a better texture of paint on the building. Anyway, and um, then for the green trim, the posts, as you can see on the corner here, as well as the trim around the doors. Um, I took made four coats of Indian ink on the trim strips and then I brushed on a coat of the Burlington Northern Green and then I sanded them with 1500 grit sandpaper to wear the paint away and then I restained them with about another three or four coats. And again, I think it worked out pretty good. You can see it real good on the sign right here. Um, the back section, if you can see that, you can see it peeking out there. Trying to find a way you can see it a little better here. Um, again, the four coats of India ink alcohol, followed by uh, a two very light dry brush coats of reefer yellow, followed by another four coats of the India ink. Now, the door you see there under the lamp, I'm pardon the jerky camera, I'm repositioning my hand so you can see this. There we go. The door frame I actually made a little bit nicer. Um, coat of paint so it'd stand out a bit. All the windows and doors are aged concrete with a heavy uh, India ink alcohol wash on them. Um, the clabbered metal siding here covering the, um, the the bad part of the building here. That is um, kind of a paper material from uh, northeastern scale models that Bar Mill uses. I started off spraying it with that cheap Walmart automotive primer, followed by uh, liberal dry brush coatings of grimy black, roof brown, rust, and Milwaukee Road gray. And I just kind of use my eye and judge what I like the best. You can see I've got 
spare pieces I thought would look good piled up along the fence. So, there you go. Uh, the roof, again, is typical Bar Mills uh, rolled roofing material. This was painted, I made a custom mix of roof brown, rust, and a little bit of gray. And, um, and that's the color I got, so kind of went by their suggestion. The signs, some of them I sanded, make them look more worn. Uh, I've got a fence around it. This is the Bar Mills Insta Fence. This is the greatest thing in the world. So easy to put together. You can tell I popped off a few boards, leave them lying around. Um, <clears throat> see, i got a sign on here. It's one of the signs I sanded. Um, but uh, four coats of India ink alcohol on all the pieces. Four very heavy coats. And I think it worked out pretty good. Very easy to assemble. You just follow their instructions. Um, pull off boards, split them, chop part of them off, whatever you want to do. And um, a lot of the junk came with the kit. Again, this is a... I really liked what all came with this kit. Those uh, barrels in the corner there came with it. Um, let's see here. What else came with it? The stack of boxes here on the end. Uh, the tires. There's a little... The uh, red oil tank, and then a bench there with some type of, I don't know if it's a vise or a saw. Couldn't really tell on there. A lot of pallets. That came from a Cenis Accent package. Uh, I used a lot of those in there. Uh, the guys were just extra ones that I had lying around there working. Uh, I think overall I made a very neat kit, so uh, not bad at all. And again, I'll back out here. You can kind of see how it fits into the scheme of things. Um... This is definitely something that was probably here before the power plant or the grain elevator. And everything just kind of built up around it. So there you go. So there you have it. I um been like I said, I've been busy, just not much time to videotape anything. Uh there are some things coming up. Uh, my dad and my father and I are my father and my son and I are going to be in Dayton, Ohio this weekend for the GTE with Miami Valley. You get to see my auto rack in motion, as well as the uh, pig flats, uh, trailer and flat cars that I put on the back of my general mixed freight. Also, um, so we have that. I have also am starting up a Fremo modular group called Central Indiana Fremo here in the central part of Indiana. Um, I am going to be sharing my progress on that, uh, which I plan on starting the module next month as soon as I get a warm day to start doing bench work. I don't like to work out in the garage in cold weather. Uh, really, who doesn't? But um, I will be sharing all my progress on that. And um, if any of you out there in this area of central Indiana and you're interested, uh, I'm based uh, just northeast side of Indianapolis. Um, if you're interested, uh, uh, leave me a message here, send a message to my account here on Yahoo with the way I can get a hold of you, and uh, we can start talking. So there's about two, four or five of us or so. We're just starting out, um, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty cool. We're going to go with a, a Midwestern theme, uh, especially anything that might be specific to Indiana. Um, uh, we do lots of operating. We're focusing hard on realistic scenery as well as making everything practical and easy to set up or take down. So, If you don't know anything about Fremo, go to www.fremo.org. Uh, there's uh, lots of great links to various clubs. Uh, the New England Fremo Group, um, Minnesota Fremo Group, uh, those are all really neat clubs with good modules, and they appear to be good organizations as well. Um, so. Uh, you might want to check those out if you're interested, and hopefully we're going to be putting pictures on there over the course of this year. So, uh, Anyway, that is all for now. I hope everybody's doing well, and uh, thank you and good day.